Hello and welcome to the top 10 tag team characters on Bleach Brave Souls. For this list, I'll be going over the strongest and most useful tag team characters that are out so far. Coming in at number 10, we have Tag Team Soifong. Being the only decent Soifong, she actually does bring a lot of stuff to the table. She has a pretty high attack, she can use more than the typical number of flash steps, and she inflicts poison on everything she does. This is really useful for her because her strong attack 2 is a vortex move, and her regular normal attacks are actually pretty fast. And while she doesn't have a full screen special, she does have bombardment, but even that doesn't compare to it inflicting poison. <laughs> Coming in at number 9 is Tag Team Sajin, one of the few characters that everybody who plays the game somehow seems to have. This Sajin is actually not bad. He not only has a decent attack, but he also has Frenzy, and although his SP may not be that high, he does have a strong attack damage link, making him a decent character to play with a hybrid build. But what might be his most useful quality is the fact that he has Debilitator and a chance to inflict paralysis on all of his strong attacks and his special, which by the way does affect the entire screen. Coming in at number 8 is Tag Team Momo. This character is actually a great character for PvE, as she has a strong attack damage link, and both a Soul Reaper and a Hollow Killer. But what is most notable about her is that she's a ranged character that can inflict burn on everything she does. And she has Debilitator. This means that even at level 1, she can take out even the strongest bosses just by setting them on fire. I wish I could take out my enemies by setting them on fire. And because she's a neutral color, she can actually take on any raid without being at a complete disadvantage. Up next we have Tag Team Rangiku, who is actually the most used and relevant of the old Tag Team characters. She has an Arankar and a Hollow Killer, and her stats are pretty decent. And unlike all the other Tag Team characters that came out last year, and most of the older characters in general, her abilities actually closely resemble that of the more recent characters. She has a plus 30 Bruiser, a plus 40 Berserker, Defense Weakening on her special, a Heavy Hitting Full Screen special, and a boosted Strong Attack Recharge Link. It is actually strange that she stands out so much among the rest. It kinda makes you think what exactly was in k mind when they did this. Coming in at number 6, we have Shojiro. Caleb actually did a pretty good job with this character considering he's one of the characters that we see the least of in the entire show. He has pretty decent stats and a strong attack damage link. He also has a plus 30 bruiser, a plus 40 berserker, can inflict paralysis on everything he does, and he has debilitator. Sadly, his SP isn't all that high, and although he does have a good Berserker and a strong attack damage link, this character would have been way better off with Frenzy, especially since he has a charge attack. Although on second thought, it's probably a good thing that they didn't. There's very little resistance to paralysis in the game right now, and giving him Frenzy might have actually made him overpowered. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 is the captain of squad 4, Retsu Nahana. This Retsu actually surprised a lot of people when she came out to be a high SP character with Frenzy instead of the next blue healer we all thought she was gonna be. That said, she does have a boosted stamina recovery link, but the rest of the character is focused on damage. She has one of the highest SPs in the game, and as I mentioned earlier, she has Frenzy. She also has a plus 30 bruiser with a decent attack and a mobile vortex, which is pretty rare. She also has a Soul Reaper and an Arankar killer which is the best thing you can ask for a character, as it is useful for both PvE and PvP. On top of all this, she also has a chance of inflicting paralysis with all of her strong attacks and her special. With this heavy hitting Retsu, it kinda makes me wonder if Caleb is prepping us for the next Retsu.
Next on the list we have Tag Team Ichigo, who in my opinion is one of the more useful reds to take on any raid. This is because he not only has a really high SP and frenzy, he also has one of the longest duration vortex moves in the game. It's also one of the widest. Like Retsu, he also has the best combination killer effects, and his decent attack makes him actually really good to play as a hybrid character, as you can trap the enemies in your long duration vortex while you beat them to death with a giant sword. Overall, this character made it so high on the list because of his impressive stats and abilities. Though I will say because of his vortex, he's much more suited to be a PvE character than a PvP character. At number 3 on the list we have Tag Team Jushiro, who is one of very few high attacking hard characters in the game so far. He has a really impressive attack at 740 and his plus 40 bruiser and soul trait make it go up by 60% by himself. And if that weren't good enough, his normal attack is ranged with a chance of inflicting paralysis. And although his strong attacks 1 and 3 aren't anything impressive, his strong attack 2 really complements his playstyle, as it is quite possibly the widest and longest lasting vortex move in the game. And to top it all off, this guy's special inflicts burn. Really the only thing they could have made better is replacing his Espada killer with a Hollow or a Soul Reaper killer. Ipsy! I've said it before and I'll say it again, this Renji is impressive. He has one of the highest SPs in the game, as well as Frenzy, and he has a strong attack recharge build which is a great combination. His strong attack 1 and 2 have decent range and his strong attack 3 is a charge attack that when fully charged has a chance of inflicting burn and is full screen. Not to mention it does double the damage, which is a lot because again, he has a high SP and Frenzy. Much like most of the other characters on this list, he is also best suited for PvE as he has a Hollow and a Roncar killer. I will say it is nice to finally see a Renji that implements his Shikai's ability into his normal attack. And at number 1 we have Tag Team Koga. He is not only the best tag team character, but he's one of the best hybrid characters to ever come out. He's got really good stats, a boosted 20% damage reduction link, frenzy, a vortex move, he's ranged, and he has a chance of inflicting status ailments in all of his strong attacks and his special. This guy really has it all, and I think he was intended to be a counter for Broken, as he has both a captain and a soul reaper killer, and I really didn't realize how bad I needed him until I just said this out loud. We really don't know if K-Lab's gonna make another set of tag team characters, but one thing's for sure, if they do, it'll be really hard to top Koga. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for future top 10 videos.